here with the Chatham Journal, and I'm in the Matisse Clinic with the infamous Staffords. We've got Greg on the left, Paula on the right, and right there smack in the middle is the picture we took last year at the Matisse reunion. Bunches of people up there. I personally love the picture, but as I mentioned to Paula, I wish people would have moved a little bit more over there. But uh, they've done a fantastic job, and you've got that framed in some kind of special wood. Okay, that frame is made from pine that was pulled out of the ceiling of the Justice Motors building. And a fellow by the name of Baron Hoffman made the frame. He's a Pittsburgh dude. Also made this curio cabinet, which we're going to be filling with a whole bunch of the neat stuff we dug out from behind the building while we were excavating. And um, then Havoc is also going to make some flight trays out of that wood as well. And so we're, the wood comes out really pretty. This 50 year old pine is 50. Well, 90, I mean, 75 year old pine. Oh, is, okay. It's really nice because it was built in 47. Now, who did this job for you? Um, fellow by the name Baron Hoffman. Um, I've just known him from Chapel Hill in Pittsburgh since the 80s, early 80s. and. He was a cabinet maker then, worked at Lowe's for a while, and now is a cabinet maker again. Okay. Really nice work. So if somebody wants to, they can reach out to Baron for that. But the other thing you need to take a look at is this flooring. It's an interesting looking tile, and actually, you had picked that out because it went well with the glass at the entranceway. I think they complemented each other well. I was trying to find something that was a little bit old, antique-ish. This building was built in 1948, and so I was trying to find a tile that was close to something that you might have seen in 1948. Let me ask you this. This building has a lot of history that, as you can see from the picture, there were a lot of people that were born in this clinic, which matter of fact, or de facto, was the Pittsburgh Hospital. Uh, why do you decide to do what you're doing here and, and what's driving you to, to, you know, complete this dream of yours here? Well, I think it was because it was, it was a little bit of an eyesore for the town. And, um, you know, we always thought this was a beautiful building and the glass block I've always been drawn to. And then when Greg was, um, you know, got the space that, that Havoc and the Mod are in, um, we, this building was not available, but we were waiting and hoping that it would become available and we could make it part of the SoCo project. All right, now this project, you, you're gonna let, you're letting Greg manage more of the construction on this project than on the Havoc and the Mod expansion and, and Doherty's. Well, Absolutely, I've, I've been the person picking colors behind the scenes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you don't, are you color, are you color, color blind? Is that why she's getting to pick the colors? There is some yeah, look at those socks. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> So she's actually going to manage the hospital, Ben Bill. Okay. And um, so I'll be more doing as I'm told this one than the last. There'll be stricter oversight on this one than there was on the last one. All right. Now you have uh, a, your first tenant coming in, is that right? Yes. Pittsburgh yes. Uh, Plus. I mean, Print Plus. Yeah. Yes. And that's going to be Heather Johnson right over there. Yes. And she's going to be moving in sometime next week or the next couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, she's pretty much moved in. Oh, has she? And um, she's also a notary and does business services. And, um, you know, so she'll be here in the front front part of uh, the, the clinic. Or I call it the Marlowe. That is the eventual name of the building. And we'll M-A-R-L-O-W? M-A-R-L-O-W-E. Because oh, Catherine okay. Marlowe. Um, was the owner of this building last before the Staffords, and so in honor of Catherine, we are um, going to call this the Marlowe. All right. And the other thing too is, it, with Heather coming in to this space right here, one of the things we did last year was we took that picture, and you've gone ahead. The Staffords have gone ahead, and we've got prints made out of those five by ten inch prints. People will be able to come in and and pick those up here at the office. They'll need to see. Heather up there, and uh, you're working on the honor system. Basically, if your face isn't in that picture, you're not getting one. That's me talking, that's not the Staffords. They would love to give everybody a picture, but hey, there were about 100 people that showed up for that reunion. Yeah, thank you for your patience. We knew, we know it took a little while, but we really wanted to have the big picture hung. 
um, when you came to pick them up and we Heather's just ready we're ready for her to open here at the front of the building and so um, it's now a good time for people to pick up their prints. Now you were the driving force behind the idea for the reunion weren't you? Oh I don't know I think that was him. Was that you? Yeah I helped I helped yeah. with it. Well it was it turned out to be a very successful event because you, you had a band out there people you had a food truck people had uh, a great time we had food catering people had a, a, a great time and had a chance to reminisce. Right, and you know, one of the things that we didn't think about before it happened, but clearly thought about as it happened is, there's never been a festival around here for people from here. Like, I'm not from here, I'm from Chapel Hill. I moved here in the 90s. You know, Paul moved here in the 90s from Raleigh, and but people who grew up and lived in Pittsburgh, there hadn't been this get together. So when we had the get together, there were a hundred people who were born here, but they brought an entourage. <laughs> it was a big bunch of people all, you know, many of which were seeing each other since the first time in, you know, high school in the 60s and 70s. So it was, it was really cool just to listen to and listen to the stories. And, say, a, and I love that Shirley Taylor, who I've known since, oh. Now, which one's Shirley? Shirley's right there. Oh, there she is. And I've known her since, I think, 1985. And Shirley and her family, I think there were five family members who were all born here, and they had shirts made. They, yeah, that's right. They had those custom-made shirts. Yeah. It was kind of like a mini reunion of right. the Matisse. Yeah. Right. And actually, I think the, I did get a shot. Or, I know they I got together for got a picture. shot mm -hmm. of them all together. Yeah. Um, I know the Matissans were here, the, the daughters were here uh, several months ago. I had a chance to talk with them. You can see that on YouTube. What was their take with, with your, what you're doing here? Have you even had a chance to talk to them? Or? Yeah, um, we spoke to them on the phone and they actually, Cindy Schmidt over at the Historical Society brought them through and they took a look around and it was just reminding them of childhood and um, they were telling stories, for example, one I didn't realize is at the top of the hill by the water tower, as you head out of town, that's the house where Dr. Matisse lived. And Miss Marla owned that build, that house as well. They've sold it and it's being you know, renovated now. If you drive by, you can see it being renovated. But they were, they were happy that it's not being torn down. Um, and we didn't want to tear it down. I think one of the stories too, when I talked to Matisse is that they mentioned the fact that their dad, since he was here, what, over 50 years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, yeah, some, 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 some of the payments that he received was, was literally chickens right. and livestock and food stuff that people grew because they just didn't have the cash to pay him. Right, and my brother-in-law is a doctor in town now and I don't know that he's had this, but his old partner was Mike Tyler. And Mike Tyler would end up with watermelons and tomatoes and chickens and, you know, whatever came out of the garden because there's still a, you know, healthy percentage of people who couldn't pay or if they did pay with long time doing it. So they did bring them food. And I think Eric has had the same thing with my brother-in-law. What was your favorite story about the Matisse? Oh, um, I think that the, the girls giving their stories about how they grew up in the hospital and how they came after school and how it was just part of, of their, um, you know, grow, growing up and part of developing them. And they were really passionate about it. It was really a great story you did with them. Yeah, I think one of the other interesting things that those sisters have mentioned was and when you were clearing out the area, we got to go back into the room where they did the radiation, right. um, the x-rays. And I found out from the daughters that Dr. Matisse actually, back in those days, he didn't have the same safety protocols. So he landed up getting cancer in his um, arms and in his, and in his hands and had to go to Duke for, for some mm -hmm. surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, but he lived to be, I forget how, I think he got to live to, live to be in his 70s. So yeah. it didn't turn out. I mean, it's not a happy thing, but at least uh, 
you know, they took care of a lot of folks in the community. Uh, to wrap this up, anything else folks need to know? They, they can come and get their 5x10 from Heather. Um, we'll put out an announcement on the chat and journal. Stop in and get Heather. You get your 5x10 prints of those. Um, basically, now, over the next year or two, we'll be drawing designs at Tyler Ho Taylor Hobbs and his crew will be drawing plans um, going back and forth, you know, with the board and everyone doing, you know, doing what they do. And hopefully, you know, in a year or two, we may act, you know. Well, let me ask you this. Can we, can we get like a, a hint as to what you got going on? You got Heather right here, but then you've got, what do you, it's three, two stories in the rooftop. Is that what there's, it is? There's, right. There's going to ultimately be um, a um, restaurant on the top floor. Plus, above that, the elevator will go all the way to the roof and you'll be able to dine outside. Um, what we're hoping for, we've already had previous discussions with um, a sushi place or two that we love and I'll crawl over broken glass to get to if, if they were to decide to come. And the other is there's a high-end steakhouse. I don't know the people, but that they are a possibility too for the rooftop dining and stuff. I don't know. So there's a, there's a chance for sushi or high steaks, high, high steak steak. Right, high steak steak. You know, that's what we need. So you can afford it. You know, you gamble, and if you win, you get a steak. Otherwise, it's cheeseburgers. <laughs> so. Uh, since you're, I guess Greg's going to implement what your plans are. You kind of gave a general idea. What do you plan to do with the first floor? Is that going to be more office space or? That's, uh, we're renting right now, looking at renting out um, individual spaces or two spaces to different uh, you know, retail or um, offices for different businesses, be it uh, contractors or accountants, um, lawyers and such. So this is just one part of this total SoCo project. Uh, let's just wrap this up. Is there anything else we need to know about the Matisse and or the Marlboro building as you're going to start calling it? We'll say as soon as we figure it out. We're kind of making it up as we go along. So, and again, the, the, the town will be the controlling factor. You know, when they sign off on sewer, when they can, you, you know, all of the things that happen in town. So, right. and our and, plan, our plans, and our signage, and all that, the town will sign off on. So, right now, it's just the the space that we really don't have to do anything to right now. Right. It's a little bit of cleanup from previous. I think you and I have talked about the town manager. You're, Jonathan's the new guy here. Yes. How's he working out so far? I got a man crush on him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so he is um, doing extremely well. He's taking care of some problems in a matter of weeks that we have been trying to get done for years. And I'm not disparaging anyone who was here before. They had tons to do, all right. But you know, Jonathan's come in, had lots of energy and lots of focus. He's gonna run out of gas. I don't know what it's gonna be, but it's gonna happen. But him, um, new Randy, and Kent are all doing a great job. And we always have to say new Randy and old Randy and chat them so they know which Randy you're talking about. Right. And um, but. You know, again, Jonathan, New Randy, and Ken are doing a tremendous job. All right, and let's just wrap it up with uh, how's Havoc and how's the mod and, and how's Doherty's going? Uh, Doherty's accused us of being mean because they had made a bet that they would be open by October. I asked, offered them double or nothing by Christmas, and Donovan replied that I am a meanie and should quit tormenting them. So they're shooting for the end of the year. They're doing the best they can. Doherty, I mean, um, Havoc and the Mod are absolutely living the dream. We never thought this early into the development of Chatham Park that the critical mass of people would be here. We were wrong. You know, it's here, it's busy. Both owners, both, both owners of Havoc and, and the Mod are quite happy right now with the 
uh, July and January are the kind of worst two months of the year for right. restaurants, and um, they're really happy with how July has been. And I think that the fall, with how much outdoor space there is with the patio, et cetera, I think that um, September and October are going to be huge for them. Now, when you were playing this, I think and when I had been out there and, and talked to Greg about it, the patio was a big component of your overall plans for the SoCo project. Right. And I guess that's worked out really well for everybody. Right. We, I personally don't like eating outside. So if we go to a restaurant, if I was like, where are you going to eat? Inside. So it's more of her vision that people would be outside. I just can't imagine being there on purpose. All right, so folks, don't even look at him. He had nothing to do with eating yeah. outside. Here's the brains behind the outside. He does not like to sweat. Yeah. <laughs> so, not like to sweat. So, yes, I like to eat outside because I'm cold all the time. And I was like, eating outside. Way. Hang on, except at night, at which point she's immediately hot. Look, well, let's, hey, let's not go there. <laughs> uh, but you mentioned before we started recording that they were they were busy last night and both yeah, the yeah. mod and yeah. and the havoc and I think part of it is the fact that they have consistently a food truck out here. I know the mod also gets mobbed by the folks from Havoc and are both of them like last night did both of them have bands playing? Yeah, yeah. I came up the street at about eight thirty and it was just you know, as I say, it was poppy because people were out about mingling, both bands were going, and um, somebody commented to me who came into the area and they said, you know, the really nice thing is that the sound doesn't compete with right. each other. So each uh, venue is just completely independent, even when they have two bands at the same time. So. And, and when you think about how cool it is for downtown Pittsburgh that between, you know, Postal, seafood, you walk up to the main street, walk down here, you're going by City Tap, you're going by S&T's, you're going by the Beagle, you've got Bakery across the street, Burley's across the street, and then all the way down, you can come up here, there's something you're going to want to eat, there's something you're going to want to drink, and there's going to be something to do. Tap has bands, Havoc has bands, the, um, Mod has bands, and when Doherty's opens, they have yeah. music as well. And, and now you're going to have ice cream at the top of the street and the bottom of the street. Right. That's the, right. The Ma new um, Maple Leaf with that blue building. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And winter's coming, so be ready to put on your winter weight. You know, you got to eat ice cream so you're ready to stay warm. It's important. I think a lot of folks are happy to be having this facility here. And I think it's also, last year when you did the pub crawl, uh, I know. You did some sponsorships on the Facebook, on Facebook, and you went beyond just. Right. You went towards the edge of of Chatham County into Apex, a right. little bit into Cary, up into Chapel Hill, and you you bringing in people that probably never even thought about coming to Pittsburgh before. Correct, and that that worked too well. In fact, you know, I was up here with my shorts because it worked too well, and. We're standing outside the bar. There's way too many people there. We had hired extra police officers, but we actually needed, you know, double extra police officers. And at the time, Pittsburgh did not have Uber. Pittsburgh did not have a hotel or anything like that. So we're waiting to do another pub crawl until the hotel is open, until we have some Uber drivers, and we can do it safely, and then we'll do it again. And I think you mentioned you've talked to the hotel owner about. Oh yeah, about the fellow's name Malcolm Bryant, and he is, you know, extremely supportive. You know, he's a good guy, and he's going to be a great asset for this town. Well, I think he also grew up in a town similar to Pittsburgh, up in Kentucky. So I mm -hmm. think he's, he's he's kind of very cognizant of that. All right, we're coming on twenty minutes. Let's wrap this up, folks. Remember, if you got your picture in this big picture, you can get it. The smaller version, the five by ten version from Heather. We are going to check in with the Stafford somewhere down the road. Greg's got to get to work while Paula supervises in putting this up and not not hurting himself. And well, more important that I get it straight to her than not hurt myself. If I'm injured along the way, it's okay. Yeah, but I see a level there in the corner, so it <laughs> should be okay. All right, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you.